So now that we have ourselves set up to where we can actually hold the firearm and all that kind of stuff, we want to start working on the offhand IK to get this hand over here and explain some different things as to how to use it. If you want to, don't want to use it, how to, you know, not use it and that kind of stuff. So basically, if we go to the procedurals anim layer, there is an entire section right here for the offhand IK. And what we can do from here is if we, again, this assumes we don't want to use the offhand IK, we can very simply grab the cache pose procedural anim prerequisite set and plug it into the offhand IK done. Or we just bypass it entirely. So we copy this cache pose, and this cache pose is this one right here procedural aiming prerequisite set and replace it with offhand IK done. So we're going to use this instead. And that goes through and bypasses the offhand IK system entirely. So if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. And likewise, if you don't want to use it, you do gain a little bit of a performance, you know, bump there just because it's less nodes running. So that's the other thing I want to discuss in a separate video is Features that you don't want to use, such as if you're never going to switch hands to where you're holding it with the left hand as your dominant, you, know, you can remove some things to remove a little bit of the cost of the anim graph. It's not going to be much, but you know, a little something is a little something. Anyhow, with that said, let's go ahead and get the offhand IK system set up. So in our BP firearm, we want the offhand IK component, because remember I mentioned this favors composition. So this is how it works. So we want offhand IK, so we add the offhand IK component to give us that feature set. So likewise with the procedural anim component, we have the initialization settings data asset. So we want to make that. So let's go to our tutorial folder, data, and create a new data asset. And again, search for init, and we have the offhand IK initialize. So DA underscore offhand IK init underscore firearm. So likewise before offhand IK mesh name, the name of the firearm mesh, which is skeletal mesh. And then we have our sockets. So we don't care about the right hand IK socket. That is for if we are holding the firearm with our left hand as the dominant hand. We are only worried about the left hand IK. So that takes a socket S underscore left hand IK. So let's go ahead and save that data asset and plug it in like so. Now it's probably going to go, hey, there's an assertion maybe. Because it couldn't find a socket because we never actually added it. So yeah, it does not contain either the socket, left hand IK or right hand IK. So another point to be wary of is when you have assertions like this, I recommend always leaving the output log open. That is just my preference. I do have a lot of assertions set up to be thrown when something is not configured correctly. And you can very easily just read it. It's the first line, well, technically I guess second line, but you can see the condition here where it says attached to mesh one actor, BP underscore firearm, this guy, BP underscore firearm, on component skeletal mesh, which is our component, does not contain either socket S underscore left hand IK or S underscore right hand IK in the SKG offhand IK component, SKG offhand IK, which is this component. It doesn't get much more simpler. However, for some reason, people don't either read it or I don't fully know. Anyways, let's go ahead and add a socket. It's going to be S underscore left hand IK. And I'm just going to kind of just position it. You know, I'm not really going to try to position it here. We're going to position it at runtime. So now, Go ahead and clear the log. When I press play, you can see there's the left hand. Now there is more we have to do, such as the pose, but we can actually get it semi-close. As you can see, it moves it around, you know, kind of how you would want. So that's the first step. Second step is going to be the actual settings. So if we go to the BP firearm, offhand IK component, go to settings, we have the offhand IK settings data asset. Now, we don't actually have this provided because it's kind of a per animation thing, depending on what you want. So you might have a pose for a handguard, a pose for a vertical grip, angled grip, a side grip, you know, all that kind of stuff. And that's going to be dictated by, well, that's going to, you're basically going to have one of these 
for each of those. So we're going to go ahead and make one for this firearm. Now we do have our data folder. Let's go ahead and make a new one called initialize. And just throw all of our initialize settings in there and just have a new one, well, a new section over here for everything else. So again, new data asset and search for offhand. And here you have the offhand IK settings. EA offhand IK settings. And we'll just do, well, keep it simple, firearm for now. And as you can see, it takes in different poses. So in our case, we don't really have a dedicated pose, but what we can do is we can use the idle animation. So basic rifle idle that we're using in our anim BP right here. So that's going to allow us to basically get the same effect. So let's go ahead and go back to the firearm, set the offhand IK data asset. And now when we hit play, you can see we actually have the appropriate pose being used. So what we can do, bring out the view and just adjust as needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and eject. And let's go ahead and get this to where it's more usable. And really just kind of get it positioned how you want. So I just want to get the thumb down a tiny bit. Run it forwards ever so slightly. And I am satisfied with that. So we can save. And now we are good to go. We have the offhand position where we want using the pose that we want and we're pretty much good to go. So I do have a few examples. So if we head back to the SKG SF core module under animations, I do provide a few grip poses. So for example, this vertical grip, if we were to swap out for that, you can kind of see where this goes. So now it's holding a vertical grip and we just need to adjust position, which is on a per firearm or per attachment basis. So what we would do is we would have one of these offhand IK settings, which I'm actually going to rename to M4. We would have, you know, one of these for the M4, one for say a bolt gun, one for holding a angled grip, vertical grip, you know, so on and so forth. So that's the whole idea behind the offhand IK system is one, it is optional, but two, it's very reusable. So once you define it for something such as a grip, you can use that grip anywhere and you're still going to have the same settings and configuration applied. So anyhow, with that said, I will see you in the next one.